Welcome back to Football Life. Well, as promised for football culture, we're going to West Park in Burnie for the egg-shaped oval, the notorious bike track and the steak sandwich. York Park is the home of the North Launceston Football Club. Originally established in 1893 as railway, in 1898 they became Essendon for a year and then in 1899 North Launceston. They won 23 senior premierships in the NTFA before joining the statewide league in 1985. They played out in six statewide grand finals to become premiers in 95 and 98. In fact in 98, under the reins of current VFL coach Matthew Armstrong, they became the only statewide league side to ever go through a season undefeated. I believe uh, York Park Oval was originally a tip, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it was a rubbish tip all the way through here, surrounded by a swamp. Surrounded hence, by a swamp? Yeah, hence the name of the Swampies many years ago, so, yeah. People who lived in the North Launceston area were known as Swampies, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, and anyone that played with North Launceston was known as the Swampy too. What was it like when David Rees Jones came to the club? He's certainly a, a big personality and a character in footy. Did, what, what was it like when he first arrived? How did he impress you? Definitely a character, definitely. Um, look, David was a, uh, a great person. Um, different off the field than on the field. Um, you know, he uh, he led by example. Um, I think he copped more in Tasmania than what he actually gave. <laughs> but I suppose if you're from North Lonsys, you'd probably say that. But no, definitely a, a, a good person and a good character. What are the hardest things about travelling to Burnie and about playing the Burnie side at home, do you think? Oh, look, you know, I'm definitely um, today, for instance, under lights tonight, we're a little bit different. Um, the hardest thing is probably the trip home because uh, the boys like to have a pretty, pretty good time on the bus on the way home and yeah, it's a long trip. Yeah, our last game actually is against uh, Spiffton, I'm not sure, even though it's the last game. Um, it's a good chance for the players to bond very much uh, for the before the final. That's actually a Saturday game, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we probably won't get back till Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh One of the main issues in statewide footy over the last few years has been travel and the difficulty this creates for both players and spectators. With a return to regional footy, clubs have the promise of a lot more footy in their local area and a lot less travel. However, North Launceston have made the choice to join both South Launceston and Launceston in the NTFL, which is essentially a North West Coast competition, which means the ritual of travelling back and forth on the team bus is still very much part of their Saturday routine. Gary, you're about to get on the bus at 10.30 in Launceston to make the couple of hour trip to Burnie and it's going to be a long day. You might be back for about 12 or so hours. What have been some of the issues in making the choice to play in the NTFL and have to travel to the coast quite a bit throughout the year? Oh, look, I don't think the travel bothers, bothers us too much because the boys have done it all last year and years gone by since it's statewide, but our decision was, I think, purely made on that uh, South Launceston and Launceston were in this competition and they're going to be our arch enemies when we play in the local derbies, so uh, that'll be, you know, we're, we'll get our good crowd, so that had a lot to do with which comp we played in. I um, enjoyed the bus, so I think it's, it is good for the players, you know, it does get them to know each other, especially on the way home, it's probably that when it's a bit lighter on the way home, it's a little bit relaxed and tense at times, so, but we do get off the bus, have a bit of a stroll around and, uh, you know, about halfway mark, so we get the legs moving and, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's good for the bonding part of the team thing. After Gary and the boys headed off in their bus, we jumped in our van and joined them for the journey two hours further northwest of Burnie. On arrival, we were struck by something which rivaled Triabunna's Woodchip Mountain. It was Burnie's own Everest of pulp. Burnie was originally settled in 1881 as Emu Bay. During its early days, it was surrounded by towering rainforest. Then about 100 years later, it was coloured by the AWP and paper mill, which employed about 3,000 people during its peak, but today only a few hundred. With the downsizing of Adable PM, the closing of the Talkside factory and other industries, Bernie has been seeking more and more of the tourist dollar. There's plenty to see and taste around the local Bernie area, including the produce here from the local Lactos cheese factory. When you see the lush green pasture and the rolling meadows that surround the Bernie area, you realise it really is great cattle country and why it produces such good cheese and such tough footballers. In this game has the potential to, to uh, fly right up, board has it moved. The West Park Oval behind me is the only thing that separates the Bass Highway from the Bass Strait. It's traditionally feared by opposition players and coaches because of its unpredictable winds, its bizarre egg shape 
and also because of the notorious West Park bike track, which, like in Queenstown, runs right around the Oval. Kevin Wells is a volunteer groundsman at West Park, responsible for setting up the partitioning to surround the wet area of the can bar. He's had a long association with West Park in his early days as a cyclist around the bike track up to the present day as a very keen football volunteer. Oh yeah, you get a lot of enjoyment when you meet young people. I'm a great believer that if you only associate with old people, you become older. <laughs> okay, yeah. They frustrate you at times, doesn't it? Sure. I do. I probably frustrate them too. Yeah. Do you get big crowds sometimes here for the can bar? Oh, oh yeah, yes, at times. Uh, depends on the weather. Yeah. If the weather's not real good, well, it's not much open. No, no. Up on the hill. No, sure. And the wind sometimes in winter, I guess, blows straight off the bass straight across the oval, gets pretty chilly. Yeah, yeah, but that's home. That's home? <laughs> yeah. And you were born just up the road, yeah? Yeah, yeah up in Oliver Street. Yeah? yeah, so you've been around Burnie all your life? Pretty well. I was brought up over Blythe, now they call it Hay Bridge. But... And how important is um, the Burnie Football Club for the community here, and how important is the community for the football club? Both go hand in hand. I think if no football club, well, what have you got? Not much for the young people. When you see they come out here and they play their game and they enjoy their, their social life after. And you make a terrific lot of friends through sport. I often wonder how people get on that's never been interested in sport. I'm standing here on the infamous bike track in West Park Oval in breezy twilight conditions. This is the home of the Burnie Dockers, a club with a very interesting history of amalgamations. The Burnie Football Club was first formed in 1885 and in 1896 began an intense rivalry between Burnie and nearby town Cooey. After hating each other on the football field for almost a hundred years, in 1987 Cooey joined the statewide league as the Burnie Hawks and then in an amazing turn of events in 1994 the two clubs merged to become one and played that year as the Burnie Hawks and from 95 onwards as the Burnie Dockers. The club played off in two grand finals but unfortunately for supporters of both Cooey and Burnie both times they were beaten by Clarence. Uh, just behind us is the bike track uh, which is reasonably close to the boundary line. Ever been any incidents with the bike track here that you can recall? No, well um, I've been involved for quite a few years and I've never seen any real bad incidents with the bike track actually the line's been marked in a fair way now so and I don't think the players even realise it's there, so... It's a bit different to Queenstown, where depending on who they're playing, they yeah, have playing put the boundary the line right on the track. And I think the bike track might be a bit softer than the gravel at times. I see the devout man that I know With a ticket in his hand I see the steadfast man that I know Tell us first, Mick, you're in your second year here at Burnie. Tell us about the change coming down from the big smoke, the <laughs> AFL uh, history that you've had, the great history with the AFL coming down to a local footy culture. What was that change like for you? Yeah, I suppose it brought, a bit, brought back a lot of childhood memories, actually, Dave. Uh, being a country boy myself from Sebastopol in Ballarat, and I uh, always had aspirations, I suppose, to play league footy. Well, obviously, you realise those days soon finish, but where you're going to finish, uh, you never know. But I've always wanted to coach, and Burnie Footy Club gave me the opportunity to do that, so I'm really looking forward to that. The canteen at West Park was the most highly efficient we'd ever seen. While I was very keen for a sav test, guest star Julian O'Brien insisted on testing Burnie's very famous steak sandwich. In six years as a reporter for The Advocate, Julian, how many of these steak sandwiches do you reckon you've had? I reckon one or two cows would have uh, <laughs> disappeared in that time, David. But uh, this is what the, the supporters uh, really flock to uh, the Burnie Canteen for. This well, is uh, the gourmet treat. It's an amazing farming area around Burnie, lush green pastures and meadows. Uh, perhaps you and Daryl can take us through the process of the steak sandwich. Oh, look, Daryl, we've got to start with this uh, lovely piece of steak. You can't go past it. Nice piece of uh, fresh bread and some onion. Mm. And no proven cases of mad cow disease. No mad cow and this stuff, mate, Julian. No, it's for sure, mate. Well, you better dish us up one, mate, and we'll, uh, we, we'll have a taste. We can soon do that for you. Would you like a bit of onion? Or oh, I'd love, love some, mate. Mm. Burning onion, grown locally. Do you want sauce? Sauce, Julian? Yes, please. <laughs> Now you assure me this is the, the best piece of steak you've got here today? Top, mate. Lovely. You can eat both beef and everything. Milk's in the mouth. So Julian, what's the score out of 10 for the steak sandwich? Well, this is 9.75. Wow, 9.75. What a great achievement. 9.75. Mm. 
Burnie kicked into the wind in the first quarter but made best use of the conditions to kick three straight goals to the Northern Bombers three goals too. In the second quarter it was all Burnie. Although captain Errol Bourne was fell and taken from the ground, Burnie used greater system and running play to be five goals clear at the half time break. In the third quarter the Bombers bounced back but Burnie managed to bottle up play in the coastal wing and although the Bombers put on a couple of great goals, Burnie went to the three quarter time break with an 18 point lead. Tonight on Football Life we're talking with Sylvia Smith who's a member of the Tasmanian Upper House and also the president of the Northern Bombers Football Club. The boys are fighting back here in the last quarter, Sylvia. It's been a tough night for them, but they keep coming back. There's still probably a chance. Well, there's always a chance. It's never over till the fat lady sings, and I haven't sung yet. <laughs> <laughs> the fat lady did sing in the final quarter, and Bernie consolidated to run out winners 15-12-102, Northern Bombers 11-16-82. The Dockers starting to kick clear. Then it was back to the club rooms to celebrate what had been a great day for Bernie, winning the underage, reserves and seniors games. In the club rooms, I met up with Bernie's own NTFL Queen Quest entrant, Jessica Young, and then learned from some of the younger guys in the club the ins and outs of the meat tray, before bidding farewell to what had been a great day and night in Bernie. A big thank you to Hobart Band, the Robinsons, for their music used throughout football culture in that segment, and also to Taz Kino for their continued support of football culture. You would have been pretty jealous of that steak sandwich, Stoney. David, 9.75 is too much for me. I've got to come out next time. But there's only one more thing, Dave, I've got to say. King Island, Flinders Island, we want to come. So if you can get me there, give me a call at Football Taz and I'll be glad to come along. The boys will be glad to come along in footy culture. There you go. A couple of uh, great options for the future. Don't go away. After the break, John X, footy versus athletics. <laughs>